Hello everyone, welcome to another molding video. Today I am going to be showing you how I made the embeds for this soap. And I'm gonna start by doing the straw because in my opinion it's the easiest. And then we'll move on to the lemon and then finally the watermelon. Um, those are the three things that I'm gonna show you how to do today. If you have any questions, pop them down in the comments. So to get started, what I have here is a clay extruder. I got mine on Amazon. I'll put, again, the links in the description box below so you can find everything. Um, we're going to be using two of the different discs. So I have the uh, little small circles and then the big circle. And the big circle is going to be what we use for the main part of the straw. So I'm going to put that in my extruder now. And my extruder looks terrible because I'm lazy and I put things in the dishwasher. So that is why mine looks a mess. And since I'm not actually going to use the straw that I'm about to show you, what I'm going to use... Because um, I'm just... I'm really just showing you the technique in this video. So I'm going to use the soap dough that um, we used last week for the cow ears. I'm going to use this black and white mixture for the main part of the straw and then I'll show you how I wrapped it afterwards. So basically I'm going to roll it up in a ball or a not a ball but a log I guess and then just stick it in the um, the extruder. If you wanted to be more specific with the size, you could be if you wanted to, but I typically just do whatever I can to get it in there and call that good. So then you'll stick the other part of it in, and I like to push it down as far as I can until it starts to come out the bottom. And then I'll just um, spin the top of it so that I can secure it down. I love working with extruders, I really do, but they can get pretty messy with the soap dough when you have soap dough all over your fingers and then it gets all over the extruder, which is why I put mine in the dishwasher. So now what I'm going to do is just spin this and the soap dough will come out on the other side and if there um, if you have any air bubbles in there it will cause the soap dough to pop a little bit but um, for the most part it should be okay if you if you tried to put it in there all together so then I'm just gonna twist to pull it off and then I have this long line of soap. Obviously it's not going to be that long. What I did for the watermelon soap was I measured it out to three and a half inches um, and then I decided that three and a half inches was going to be too big so I ended up cutting them I think it was at two and a half. I am not going to be that specific because again I'm sho just showing you how I already did it so I'm going to chop it here I would recommend using either like a sharp side of a scissor or um, a uh, razor blade if you have one or something like that instead of cutting it like I just did. Um, but that really just depends on how you want the straw to look. Remember that one end of the straw will not be seen by anybody and the other one will. So now that the straw is, the main part of the straw is the way it is. Um, I'll show you how I did the little spiral and honestly to be truthful with you if you wanted you could do something like this where it's a two color um, mixture of soap dough and just plop it in like that that would be totally fine if you want to do something like that that is not how I did or not what I did however so I'm gonna show you exactly what I did so that you can see don't really need a lot unless you're making a whole bunch of them but again stick that in there 
stick this guy down. And then you can kind of see that it's starting to come out the side or the bottom. So what I like to do for this is actually lay it, which you can't really see, but I like to lay it on the side of my table where the table is right here and I can put it on the, put this part on the table so they stay semi straight and then I can just like spin or turn this guy while everything else stays on the table because the 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 smart way to handle doing this is trying to make sure that the length of the green is actually longer than the length of your straw because we're going to be wrapping it and it honestly just looks really funky when you um, try to add an extra piece on This should be long enough though. So then I'm just gonna roll it a little bit to make it straight and then In order, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit Hopefully this is a little better for you. So Now I'm just gonna push the um, Green soap dough onto the the main straw and then lightly, which it doesn't want to stick because it's older, and then just lightly spin it. You don't want to spin it really hard, um, but this is where you're going to be able to determine how close you want the line to be. And it looks funky right now, but we'll, we'll handle that. And this is why you want the outer straw color to be longer than the straw itself. And then at the end, you can just push that part in. So it's going to look kind of weird like this. Oops. So then once I've done that, now what I do is lightly roll it. And it's not going to look perfect. This is one thing that I have noticed. Um, no matter what you do, it's never going to look perfect. It's never going to look like a, um, real straw because it's soap and you are kind of mixing two things together that don't totally always want to go together. Um, they, if you get the extruder that I have linked below, they also have a smaller disc, which mine is awfully dirty right now. And you could use these guys if you wanted to do something even smaller. There's like a lot of different options. But I went with this bigger one because I wanted a thicker color, colored line. But um, like another creative option that you could do is if you wanted to, you could do like a rainbow one or a multicolored one where you uh, did the smaller outer colors and did like multiple and mix them together. So now that it looks pretty good and together, this is basically how the straw was. And then if it was too long, like I wanted to make sure that they all matched each other. So I would put them down together and then chop off what is extra. So one option, if you have them on hand, I grew up with a family that always had razor blades on hand because my dad owns an auto repair shop. So that being said, I've always enjoyed using these types of cutting tools. So if you needed to, this is one of the sharpest things that I would recommend handling with soap dough. Um, if you use like a normal knife, it'll crush it. And I'll show you a better example of this when I do the watermelon. But if you wanted to make sure that the ends are really nice, you can just chop them off. And then you have a straw.
that is the the straw portion of this video so now we are going to do the lemon I can tell you that after I had made about five lemons I was like okay I don't really want to do this anymore but I had already kind of committed to the idea of what they looked like so so it all depends on the size that you want for your lemon but I like to start mine out as um, not ovals but kind of like not perfect circles either so I'm gonna roll this in my hand right and then I'm gonna kind of go back and forth to make it go not perfectly um, round and then I'm going to start by pushing or kind of like pinching out one side and then I'm going to pinch out the second side. So it looks funky right now, um, but I've noticed that the key to a good lemon is just making sure that it all blends together really nicely. And I am somebody who is very much a perfectionist, so when something doesn't look right, I get upset. <laughs> so that's kind of one of the reasons why I struggled so much with the lemons. Um, this one actually doesn't look terrible though. So I'm going to say that is good for, for now. It kind of looks like a lemon. And the only thing that I use to texture the outside is a toothbrush. I use a toothbrush for a lot of the stuff. Mine's a little dirty right now. Um, but I use a toothbrush to texture just about all of my soap dough stuff that requires texture. I used it for my avocados, my oranges, uh, the lemons. What else have I used it for? I've used it for quite a lot of different things. So basically, I just tap it. And this one has been used quite a bit, so the bristles are um, a little bit spiky in some places and down in others. So it kind of makes it for a good texture on there. Um, so you can kind of see. And I also like to do this when the soap dough is very, um, like you've just really played with it. I don't want to use it when the soap dough has been sitting. So a lot of times, which I'll show you um, in another video in the future when I make my pumpkins, that I will set the pumpkins out to sit before I actually do the outside texturing. This I don't want to because I want that sticky look because what we're gonna do after is we push down the sticky parts and it makes the texture look more real. So I'm gonna keep going and just do my best to go all around. And you can kind of be rough with it. Again, if you mess up, you can always just crumble it and start over. So there's really no bad part to doing this. I mean, other than wasted time. And there's no way that you'll be able to fully texture every single thing or every single section on here. So uh, you can see like where my finger was here it's not as textured because I was pushing on it on the other side. So basically all I'm going to do now is push down the parts that are sticking up to kind of almost smooth it out again, but not actually smooth it out. And then once you do that, you have like a semi-textured lemon that you can plop on your soap. Okay, two done. One to go. So... The watermelon um, is actually pretty easy too. Now that I, I really think about all of these things, they're really just time consuming um, to make a lot of them. But soap dough in general is pretty time consuming. So basically what I have here is a block of soap dough and this is the color Wonderlust from uh, Nurture Soap. And this is still pretty pliable because I just made this in April, I think, or May, or, or something like that. So basically, what I'm going to do here, and um, what I did before was I, I did a lot of measuring with a ruler. 
So the reason why I did that is because I've mentioned this a few times. I have a bad habit of making my soap dough creations too big and I wanted to make sure that that wasn't the case and I also wanted to make sure that I could get enough slices out of it in order to make the soap that I needed to make. So basically what I've done here and I'm not finished yet but I've basically just made this round log and now I'm going to smooth it out by rolling it and if it gets too long you can just kind of push it down on each of the sides and keep rolling because you kind of want this part to be as seamless as possible because this is going to be the flesh inside of the watermelon and the the interesting thing about this part too I'm gonna kind of zoom you out a little bit is I have tried doing soap like clay canes with soap dough and I have not had a very good time doing it so the way that I'm doing this now involves very little um like I'm not making it long I'm gonna cut it up at this size size so I'm just going to do that to kind of speed the process up a little bit. And then you don't really have to worry about the ends either because you'll end up cutting those off and either crumbling them up or, and mixing them up or you can uh, throw them out. So now what I'm going to do is use this little bit of white that I have here and I'm going to make it a little bit softer there's a little black in there from the cow ears you could also use light green if you want to i decided to go with white because it was all i had on hand um i use the light green color that i have for all of my leaves so the um, oranges that i did i put little leaves on them and and i don't have a ton of that green left so i wanted to use white instead so now I have plastic wrap stuck sticking to me. I'm just going to roll this into a ball because what we're going to do is we are going to roll this out and I'm going to squish it down and then squish it down on each side so it kind of starts to form a rectangle. And the reason why I'm doing a rectangle is mainly because I want it to be the same size as the log. I don't want there to be any overlap if possible because it'll cause um, irregularities or whatever in the actual design. So I'm gonna start by rolling this way because this is the, the long way that I want it to go. And then I will go this way. And it doesn't, like, at the end of the day, your shaping at the beginning isn't really going to do too much. I found that the soap dough is going to kind of go where it wants to go in general. Pick it up, flip it over, drop it back down. And I probably don't have enough soap, white soap dough here uh, to cover the entire thing, so... I'm probably going to make my log a little bit smaller. So, um, as you can see here, I originally wanted it to be long this way, but it ended up being long this way. So, I'm not going to complain about it, and I'm just going to kind of go with it. So now once I'm here, and it's kind of thin enough for me at this point, I'm going to loosely wrap it. So I'm going to set it down, and then I'm going to stick the log on it, and I'm going to loosely wrap it to see where the ends meet. I'm going to flip up this stuff that's kind of like an overlap, roll it over. So I somehow managed to roll this pretty well. I'm going to rip off the excess that 
overlaps on the other side and then push it together. Now, my recommendation here for, I'm not going to do this, but my recommendation would be at this point to pull off the white, which is going to be hard for me because I just went and pushed it down. But my recommendation would be to take a little bit of water and a paintbrush and go over this and then stick it on. Like I said, I'm not going to do that because my water is over there and I'm really trying to not make this video super long for you guys. So uh, what I would recommend that you do though is put some water down and then wrap it and then move on to the next layer. And the reason is sometimes when you go cutting, and this was the mistake that I made when I made the little um, geode slices for the lavender um, crystal soap. I did not put water in between the layers and it was a really big mistake. Now ideally when you make this you're not going to want there to be any pink showing at all. I'm not worrying about that because I'm just trying to show you technique but when you roll yours out if you have extra one thing that you can do if it's only a small piece is just kind of like trying to try to make it work right just put it on there try to make it work that small part isn't going to matter too much um, or if you have extra on the end you can pull that over but if you try to do that on the entire thing it's going to look really funky so now that i've done this i'm going to let this sit and in, in the air so that it gets a little bit on the hard side so I'm going to let this sit up here and we're going to go to town on the green. My green that is harder than a rock. It's probably time that I get rid of this green anyway. Um, to give you an example of, of seeing what soap dough looks like when it's older, if it rips apart like this, chances are it's it's on the old side and it's kind of like really crumbly and, and kind of falls apart it this is old stuff that i either need to use or i need to throw out and chances are i'm going to end up having to throw this out because it is so old um but i'm going to use it to show you guys how to make this and then the rest will probably have to hit the road thankfully i won't have to use the screen this color for again for a little while so I can just make fresh stuff at that time but it's really hard to work with like difficult <laughs> So this is going to have to be good enough. Like I said, this, this is really just time consuming and a little labor intensive. Okay. So now that that is there, this is the point again where you're going to want to put your um, water down with a paintbrush on the green. And I'm going to do the side that I like I don't like this side so I'm gonna wrap it like this tear off the extra because the extra can be used to cover extra places 
if needed. Especially when you're working with older soap dough, you're gonna wanna use um, water, because if you don't, it's just not gonna stick together. Rip off the back end. Rip off this end. And sometimes, too, you can push the green a bit or push the layer a bit. Okay, so now the log for the most part is complete. I would recommend letting this sit for about a half hour depending on how fresh your soap dough is. If you just made your soap dough and it's still a little sticky then I would let it sit for like maybe an hour. My soap dough as I've mentioned a couple times is pretty old so I'm just gonna uh, go for it right now and cut it but for the most part you should let it sit if you have um, really fresh soap dough. You can also roll it if you want to, to, to make it look a little bit more uniform. I would not roll it a lot though, um, because any inconsistencies will start to kind of, if there's like a spot that has more white in it, then it'll disperse the green and vice versa because soap dough does not work the same way that clay does. So now what I'm going to do with a really sharp, um, object, whether it's, a a really sharp knife or I like to use razor blades because they're small. You can start to mark how big you want your slices to be. If you are trying to get a specific amount of slices for a specific amount of soaps, like if you're doing a loaf of soap and you have a five pound mold and you're getting 16 bars out of it, if you want to make sure that you get 16 slices out of this, then you're going to want to mark eight. Or if you want whole whole discs, you're going to want to mark 16. I'm going to show you how I cut them in half as well. So I'm going to mark out just a few because I'm going to put this back in so that I can cut this when I actually need it. So I've just made a couple indents right here. And I tried, I eyeballed them, I tried to make them pretty similar. And then I'm going to cut the end off and try my hardest to go straight down. And it's also best to try to not stop if you can. It's not easy to do, but if you can try to not stop, it's going to help you make things a lot better. And then you can peel off. I always never pull apart. Always try to twist off whenever. So like, for example, don't lift off, twist off. Because if you try to lift, it's going to pull the soap dough up and just cause a whole disaster. But already, because I didn't put the um, water down, you can already see where the white is pulling apart from the pink right here. So this is what happens if you don't put water on your soap dough. You can push it together, but it's not, it's, it's still not going to fully stay. So put your water is what I'm trying to say. So then we're going to do, so this piece I typically throw out because I'm not going to use it. So I typically just throw it out. So razor blades are of course shot sharp. One of the things that you can do is you can put band-aids around your fingers if you're worried about them getting cut. Um, I typically like to do this if I'm doing a lot of them in a row and I thought it was a good tip to show you. So basically if you put your band-aids where you're touching the razor blade, not only does it help but it also makes it so it's harder to cut yourself. So basically I'm going to put my fingers where the padding of the band-aid is on the razor blade and push down and I also find that this gives you a little bit better of a grip as well with the razor blade you feel a little bit more secure with it so then you're gonna peel off and spin and as you can see I had a few holes in my um, log 
typically you would work it a little bit more and then make it into a log whereas what I did was I just kind of made it into a log. I'm really trying to show you kind of like the things I, I showed you a lot in the last video what to do um, like step by step and this time I'm kind of trying to show you what to do while also kind of showing you what can go wrong if you try to do things quickly or if you are just trying to um, I don't want to say cut corners but in a way cut corners so this is something that can happen as well so I'm gonna cut another one there is still a hole here so you'll notice that this is starting to get pretty flat on the bottom when this happens I just like to spin it upside down and you will lose your spots but you can just kind of eyeball it and keep going push down and I did a terrible job this time of pushing down um, straight so I have one side that looks like this and one side that looks like that so it's very uneven but the good news when you do something like this is when you go to cut and actually make the watermelon slices you can cut it in a different way so that it looks fine so now that I've showed you how to cut the log you know about the trick with the the band-aids I'm gonna move forward and show you how to actually make the slices so they're ready to go on your soap so once you have the slice and I'm gonna use this one that's angled incorrectly to give you an idea of how to do this so lay it flat and then line up where you want to cut it in half and if you are um, if you have cut this on an angle so that it looks funky you can try and place it so that you're cutting at the at where the angle kind of peaks the most so then you can look at it from this way and see like oh okay this is actually not as bad as I thought it was like you cutting that way didn't completely ruin it because this side still looks okay and this side still looks okay so yeah you're gonna have two different um, widths for your soap but at the same time every single individual slice of soap is different so it doesn't actually matter that much um, so you can either decide to keep this or you can stick with one of the different sizes depending on how you are. Um, I personally don't care because I know that the soap slices are individual so it doesn't bother me as much. But one thing that I will tell you is if I push, again because I didn't put water in here, I can take out the watermelon rind. Or water, I can remove the watermelon from the rind. Which, you know, I wish it was that easy to do in real life, but it's not. Um, so, this is, again, another reason why you're really going to want to make sure that you make your log correctly and put the water in there. Because you're going to have this issue where you can separate the um, different layers. So now, once you have this together, there's two steps left to make this watermelon slice an actual watermelon slice. We need the little indents for the seeds and then we need to texture the bottom. I don't texture the whole thing because that's going a little too far but I do like to texture this part and again I'm going in with my toothbrush and I typically like to use the back end of the toothbrush and angle it kind of so let me show you like this. So I'm angling it I'm angling this up and just using the back. And then once you've done that, it just textures it a very, very small amount. And this really only matters if you're going to stick your watermelon in your soap. Like if this is the top of the soap, if you're sticking your watermelon out like this. If you're going to stick it in this way, that doesn't matter and you don't need to do that. So for the little indents i have this tool that i got i'll link it below it comes in a pack um from amazon i still have my band-aids on you could probably take them off at this point if you wanted to i'm going to keep them on for the rest of the video just because um so i have this tool and i'm going to use this edge and basically what i'm going to do and i've done this a couple different ways you can go really crazy where you do a whole bunch of them 
or you can go more on the simple side. So I'm gonna go more on the simple side. I'm gonna turn it away from me and I'm gonna start on the inside and I'm gonna do three imprints. And they actually look pretty good um, using this tool. I really like the way that they come out. So then once you've done those three, you can move on to the outside and I like to do every other here but sometimes like this space is pretty big so I'm gonna plop one in there as well and there you have it your watermelon slice is done now just rinse and repeat for however many more that you need and that is it so we have our watermelon we have our lemon and we have our straw um, the only other difference that I did for my soap that I didn't show you is um, I wanted to make watermelon lemonade cupcakes and have them have the little watermelon slice on them. So the extra step that I did because I didn't want to make more watermelons was I actually cut mine into quarters. So what I did was I took this half and I cut it in half. And then I just textured the new side with the paintbrush. So now that is basically what I put on my soap. Versus doing a whole slice. And again, the only reason why I did that was because I really wanted to um, have more slices and not run out while still being able to put them on both my watermelon donuts, which I still have some so I can show you. So these guys are my watermelon donuts and you can see I have a little watermelon in there. So I wanted to use the watermelon slice in the donut itself or on the donut itself. Um, but these guys are available for sale if you'd like to pick one up. I have a couple left. I didn't make a lot of donuts and um, cupcakes because I wanted to test them out to see how they did. So I'll link the cupcakes, the donuts, and the watermelon soap below if you would like to take a look and check them out and see how they came out. Grab a bar, grab a donut, grab a cupcake, whatever you fancy. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. I hope this helped you make your creations better. I hope that the little tips like the band-aids and stuff like that helped you as well to not hurt yourself. I cut myself many, many times when I was making this the first time, so I wanted to make sure you guys did not cut yourself um, at all during your time working with soap dough. So um, if you liked today's video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button if you liked the video, and I will see you guys here on Sunday when I show you how I made my Fruit Loop silicone mold. I've actually made quite a few molds since then. I have a pecan mold, marshmallow mold that I made as well. Both have wax in them. I'm using these guys for um, a wax melt mix for fall. So I'm currently testing and making stuff like that. But this was a mold that I made uh, yesterday for a pecan. How cool is that? And all I did was use like a real pecan. I molded it and was that? We have a uh, wax melt pecans. And then I did the same thing with some marshmallows. I actually still have the bag of marshmallows over here. This one was a lot harder. But I have my little marshmallow wax as well. That's for a s'mores mix that I have coming out. So that being said, I will see you guys here, same time, same place, on Sunday for that wax melt. On Sunday for that silicone mold making video. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.